Welcome to an interview about science in general. In the other videos, you already saw the research of our guest, which I would like to welcome now. Hello, Jose. Hello. I would like to talk to you about your personal career and opinions about some scientific topics. Sure. So the first question is, what were the most unexpected results you ever found? Well, there are many cases, but for example, we, we made a, a gen-based model about sea dispersal by mammals in the Doñana National Park in southern Spain. And the model had about 40 parameters that uh, some of these parameters were very hard to, to estimate. And we did it by laborious field experiments in the, the field. Some of them took about two weeks or several weeks. Then once we analyzed the model and made a sensitivity analysis, we found out that the model was insensitive to most of these parameters, hard to, uh, to empirically estimate, and where I was convinced about their ecological importance. Okay, and did this lead to another research question then? Maybe not directly, but we keep working on the same system at Doñana, and you, we use the same model, which is called DESPAIR, and are now addressing related research questions on sea dispersal by mammals in the same place. Okay, and what do you conclude from this experience? Well, I learned to keep working in the same that to keep working in the same system for the long term and using a multidisciplinary approach is more productive as you deepen into interesting and not obvious research questions. Mm -hmm. And just generally, what is your personal motivation about your study region, like geographically or ecologically? Yeah, there are several motivations. For example, I know this system very well as I started to work on it uh, 25 years ago, investigating the spatial ecology and behavior of carnivores mammals. Then it turns out that some of these mammals, for example, foxes and bayers, are very effective sea dispersers. And then I focus on the effect of sea ingestion by, ma by mammals on germination and ceiling survival. Finally, after some time working, I wanted to integrate all this barrier information into a single rigorous framework, that is the ABM, the agent-based model. On the other hand, Doñana National Park is a highly humanized landscape with several uh, conservation issues, including, for example, illegal hunting, hab habitat use changes, roads, etc. All these perturbations have a strong implication for the ecosystem functioning, including sea dispersal by mammals in my particular study site. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. And are there applied applications of your studies? Sure. Sea dispersal, for example, sea dispersal is a criti critical process for plant dyna dynamics, as it establishes the initial template on which all post dispersal processes, such as sea emergence and survival recruitment, will take place. Also, in the, current, in the current scenario of global chain, which include climate change, invasive species, habitat destruction, defaunation, etc., in this, in this current uh, scenario, it is critical to understand the ability of, of plant population to cope, to cope with this stressor by dispersing to vacant habitat or to other areas. In particular, we are currently assessing how the loss of some sea dispersers, foxes and buyers, are affected by the ability, affected the ability to disperse of several plant species in Doñana. Okay, so you have been, been doing uh, research for 25 years in this mm -hmm. region. So how did science in Spain change over time? Was it easier or better in the old days? Yeah, it has changed in several ways. For example, 25 years ago, we didn't, we didn't have GPS, we didn't have GPS radio collars to track animals, we did by hand, and especially we didn't have internet. So that chain, that was a big chain. Also, there were not so many courses available, so that uh, we were not so well prepared 
as the students are today. For example, our knowledge on informatics and statistics, statistics such as R, was much lower than, than the current one by students. Nonetheless, we were still very enthusiastic about our work that I think that didn't change. To find, to find the information you need, uh, the papers, was much harder before that uh, is, is today because of internet. And on the other hand, the level of competition uh, was uh, uh, the level of competition was lower than it, it is today. So, would your latest paper have been possible in the 1990s, considering all these changes? Well, my last paper is from a few months ago, from 2019, and you could you could do it 20 years ago because it consists on a field experiment on ceiling survival, and that's something that you can do with a lot of effort and a lot of field work. So that one, you can do it. However, the former one, the one that I published in 2018, consists of a ABM, uh, agent-based model that I mentioned before. And that one would be not possible because in the last 25 years, uh, there have been a strong development in computers, speed and computer, computer capacity to run simulation, uh, simulation models. And also because it took me like 20 years to get all the uh, information, all the parameter values that I, I use in this model. In particular, uh, today, today would be much easier to estimate, for example, the parameter of sea dispersal movements, the distance that they travel, the habitat use that they do, uh, using GPS radio collars. When I did that work, when I did that field work, for my PhD in 1993, we did, by, we did telemetry by hand. We were in the field doing with an antenna, telemetry with a directional an antenna and spending ses session of 24 hours, including the day and night time, for, uh, following uh, the, the animals that we were tracking. Okay, so what was the biggest challenge in your career and how did you deal with it? In Spain, the possibilities to be a researcher are pretty limited. So uh, I had to move to other countries where getting a postdoc position was easier. Countries such as the US, Germany or Portugal. Okay, and the last question is, what do you actually foresee for the future? Well, in my opinion, currently most countries and university, most countries and research centers emphasize uh, too much the quantity of research. I mean, the number of papers that research had to publish and they emphasize that more than the quality of the uh, research paper. So I hope that this pattern will change in the near future. Okay, so thank you very much. That was a very interesting interview and thanks for being here. It was a pleasure.